Welcome to a Dead Squirrel in the Woods Productions. This is a President's Day special episode. I am Nicholas, your host, and thanks for listening. If you would like early access to the show on Mondays instead of Friday, be sure to subscribe to our Spotify for $2.99 a month. Otherwise, you can find us on YouTube and iHeartRadio as well with new episodes premiering Fridays. Thank you for listening or viewing this special on The Ghost of Lincoln. Um, Since this is a podcast dealing with the paranormal, I decided, well, today is President's Day, and I I looked into Ghosts of the President, and the most popular result I got was Lincoln's Ghost. So... I followed the research and I decided to do a special on the sightings and information dealing with Lincoln on this President's Day. So I guess I should start with the obvious. It is well known that Abraham Lincoln is the 16th president and played a vital role during the Civil War. He was a lawyer before getting involved in politics and at this time law school was not required Usually, um, one method was you could study under a lawyer, and to get your to get um, certified, you just had to be a man of good character. Um, if you are interested in any of his cases, there is a book by Dan Abrams and David Fisher called Lincoln's Last Murder Case that propelled him to the presidency, and. Th- I've listened to this on audiobook, and with my paralegal background, it was very interesting to me. Um, So I might actually branch off and see if I can, if there is more information about his cases um, or writings about any of his other cases, maybe that could be a special series. I am not sure yet, but stay tuned for more info if that does happen um and that also will depend on if I can find time to my work schedule theater schedule um you know gotta fit it in there so uh Lincoln was known for his character and his humble origins his speeches and letters are well known Um, He was a very charismatic man, and um, the one thing that I did read about him um, was that he wasn't necessarily book smart as a lawyer, but he was was able to connect with juries. Um, So his humble origins and his character and just the way he presented himself, he um, endeared himself to juries in that made him a very successful lawyer. For a long time, presidents, first ladies, guests, and members of the White House staff have reported seeing or felt feeling the presence of the president's spirit. If you are looking for another book dealing with Abraham Lincoln, a non-factual one, but more of a fun read, Abraham Lincoln the Vampire Hunter by Seth Graham Smith um, I've read it and it was actually pretty funny and interesting it almost seems like it could be a biography Um, and it was also made into a movie in 2012 Um, now the first topic that I want to talk about paranormal wise um, is Abraham Lincoln has been said to have seen his death in a dream Um, One evening in 1865, he told Ward Hill Lamont, a close friend, um, and he wrote down what Lincoln had said. And here's what he said. About 10 years ago, I retired very late and soon began to dream. There seemed to be a death-like stillness about me. Then I heard subdued sobs as a number of people were weeping. I felt, I thought I left my bed and wandered downstairs. I arrived at the East Room. 
before me was a platform which rested a corpse wrapped in funeral vestments. Around it were stationed soldiers who were acting as guards, and there was a throng of people, some gazing mournfully upon the corpse, whose faces whose face was covered, others weeping pitifully. Who is dead in the White House? I demanded from one of the soldiers. The president was killed by an assassin. This was not the first time Lincoln would see his death. Soon after his election in 1860, he saw a double image of his face reflected in a mirror at his Springfield home in Illinois. One was the real face of him, while the other was a pale version of it. Now Lincoln's wife, Mary Todd, was very superstitious and she was troubled by this. Um, she said it was a sign that he would be re-nominated for a second term and would live and would not live to complete the second term. I, so I don't know how that works, but um, that was her prediction. And well, he was reelected and um, well, he was assassinated on April 14th, 1865 by a Southern sympathizer and actor, John Wilkes Booth. Um, he was shot in the back of the head at a showing of Our American Cousin at Ford's Theater, and he would die the next day. Now, it would seem Lincoln was haunted by tragedy in his life. Even before he became president, Lincoln knew that what tragedy was firsthand. At a young age of nine years old, he would lose his mother, Nancy Hanks Lincoln. Then, he would have another loss of his first love, Anne Rutledge, to typhoid fever. This would send him into a depressed state, or melancholy, and would lead to an emotional breakdown later. Now, in 1842, Lincoln would marry Mary Todd when he was 33 years old. But this was not a blissful marriage. Um, Mary Todd had an unpredict unpredictable temperament and a strong belief in the supernatural. That would go with her prediction on the mirror incident, I guess. Um, it would be her influence that led Lincoln to have an interest in spirituality spiritualism. However, he did regard it with skepticism. Now, they would have four sons, but tragedy would strike there as well. The only adult son would be Robert Todd. Edward would die at four, and young Willie died of a fever during his first term. Lincoln was shattered by the loss of Willie and would often visit his grave. Miss Lincoln would push for seances to be held at the White House to communicate with Eddie or Edward and William. Abe was believed or is believed to have attended two of them, but overall the results are said to be unsuccessful. Then, it did say before, three sons died before adulthood. Well, his son Tad died after Lincoln was assassinated at the age of 18. Now, well, 18 kind of is an adult, but I mean, he just turned 18. So, um, so it seems that one could say Lincoln was haunted by tragedy. Now, let's 
go to the origin of the Lincoln ghost story. Because every legend story has an origin. Of all the White House spirits most known, it would have to be Abe Lincoln. Now, the legend of Lincoln's ghost possibly comes from the accounts of a Jeremiah or Jerry Smith, who told reporters he, um, of tales of Lincoln's ghost. He started working in the White House during Grant's presidency in the late 1860s. Um, he was the official duster. And it's the White House is a pretty big, big place, and I'm sure it collects a lot of dust, so he needs someone to do the dusting in there. Um, but he also served as a butler, cook, and a doorman. So over his time there, he's had some, uh, he's had a few roles to fill. Now, he was also called the Knight of the Feather Duster by reporters. Um, he was popular with the reporters since they could always count on him on slow news days. He has claimed to have seen Lincoln's ghost, Grant's ghost, and McKinley's ghost. They've tried to speak to him, but all he had heard was a buzzing sound. Now, since we are talking about Lincoln's ghost, I figure um, we should talk about people who have uh, been reported to have seen Lincoln's ghost or have felt the ghost. Um, the first one that I have is Grace Coolidge. Um, she revealed in an article for American Magazine that she once saw his ghost standing by a window in the Lincoln bedroom. He was gazing out the window across the Potomac to a spot that was a Civil War battlefield. It's very interesting. Um, so now we're going to go to the second one here, and that is in 1942, Queen Wil Wilhelma of the Netherlands would stay at the White House, and during her visit, she heard a knock on the door at midnight. When she opened it, she fainted at the sight of Abe Lincoln standing in front of her. Then, there's a Mary Eben, Eleanor Roosevelt's secretary, and she once reported seeing Lincoln's ghost in the Northwest bedroom. She said he was sitting on a bed pulling on his boots as if he was in a hurry to get to somewhere, to some, something important. So, now, we're going to go to the famous former British Prime Minister, Winston Churchill. During a stay in the 1940s, when he finished his bath, he was walking to the main bedroom completely nude at that and he was known for doing this so you may question this but he is known to do this so um he said he had seen lincoln standing by the fireplace and in subsequent visits he has he was asked he had asked to be um put in a different wing than that wing. So, um, and he handled it very well, though. He didn't, yeah. So, and then Re Reagan's daughter, who was no stranger to overnight stays at the White House, Maureen, and her husband, Dennis, woke up on an occasion to see a shadowy figure by the fireplace. She did not believe, um... She did not believe her husband when he told her this. So, until she saw a man in a red coat standing near the room in the middle of the night, she originally thought it was her father, but then she realized she could see through him. Well, that would tell me it's not a real person. Um, 
And now we have Dwight Eisenhower, good old Ike. Once he told his press secretary that he was walking down the hall, down a hallway, and a figure was headed straight at him. He would identify that figure as the one and only Abraham Lincoln. Then we got Liz Carpenter. She was Lady Bird Johnson's secretary. Once, once um, she was watching a documentary on Lincoln's death, and a plaque in the room caught her eye. She read the plaque, and it was about the time, or Lincoln's time spent in that room. So his history with that room. Then there was a feeling of coldness and unease that hit her. Very interesting. Caesar Carrera, FDR's valet, once ran from the White House screaming that he just saw Abe Lincoln. That might be an actual response when to seeing a ghost, I think. Um, <laughs> in the 1980s, Tony Savoy, the White House operations foreman, said that while working on the second floor he saw a, sh a snazzy dressed Lincoln. He reported that he was wearing a pinstripe suit and sitting in a chair with his hands folded together and his legs crossed. After he blinked to clear his head, the figure disappeared. Now, lastly for sightings, it's not really a sighting. Um, it's Harry Truman, and he never saw a ghost, but um, he did say he thought he heard phantom knocks when he was in the middle of writing important speeches. Um, his daughter, Margaret, said that her father did wish Lincoln and other presidents were there, and if he was asked if they were there, um, he said, I'm sure that they are still here watching over. Uh, so he was a big believer in the uh, the lore of ghosts at the White House. Um, now, since the White House is known for other ghost sightings than Lincoln, I just wanted to cover one more. There is President William Harrison. So now it's not just Lincoln's ghosts, keep in mind. William Harrison is known to have to have haunted the attic. He was the first president to die in the White House. He served 31 days as president. Um, he was said to have been heard moving around the attic. And in 1927, the attic has was was revamped. Um, and turned into an expansion of the executive residence. And this has been a Dead Squirrel in the Woods Productions. This was edited and produced by me. Thanks for listening, and be sure to check us out on the socials. Follow us on YouTube. Um, Facebook and check out our website for more information um, we also have a subscription for Spotify for $2.99 and you get early access to shows on Monday instead of Fridays um, hope you join us for future episodes